Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Will Motivation. And today we're talking about my advice on the number one way for you to get started investing in real estate. Get ready to do an open house. Um, let me turn my, uh, my sound off real quick. It's Will Motivation. We get ready to do an open house today. So this is actually live. So when people start coming in here, um, I'm not going to be able to talk, but you guys can keep me company while I, while I wait for people to show up. Um, I don't know how many people will have to show up. I figure probably five to ten different people will show up. But um, while I'm, uh, you know, while we go live. Yeah, so this is a property that I rehab, and, um, and I'm actually, I'm going to show it today, so. I figured I already had two two people come through and see it, and they liked it, so I figure it's gonna run out pretty quick. All right, so we got our first people showing up, so let's check. Let's see how this goes down. Hey, y'all call y'all call the cops if, if some if they try to bum rush me. <laughs> Houses. 
Are your not, it's, there, it's on the website, but it's not listed yet. But it's, it'll be available. It's actually going to be cheaper than this one. But it's a, the basement is not as nice. But it's similar. It's a three bedroom, one bathroom. Oh. Yeah, that's the only thing. That one. Park the Lambo here, man. What the neighbors gonna think? This is not like a Lambo neighborhood. The neighbors, the neighbors might be like, yeah, there's a Lamborghini parked in front of this rental property. There must be some nice stuff inside a rental property. So I can't have the neighbors thinking that. Then, then they come around peeking in the windows and all that. Nah, bruh. But if it was, a, if it was a like a nicer neighborhood, then I might do something like that. Or, um, or uh, when I go do my house reviews, then I park the Lambo out. I drive the Lambo to the house reviews. Or sometimes I drive a truck with my, my kids with me.
the uh, the last time I can't wait to show the people on the show. Uh, you know what I was, I was wondering, because you know you have your senior pieces out of time. I took it just a small thing in there. I don't know if they had uh, chicken stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to believe that. It's all good. So we, re we redid this whole kitchen. Mm -hmm. There used to be a wall here, and we took the wall out. Opened it up. Opened it up. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Yeah, I'm good. My contact info is right there. Like, that's what it gives me to email. But that will bring my cell phone as well. So. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for letting us know. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Okay, take care. Yeah, and and, 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 and 
No, hold on. One, two, three, four. So that's what I looked at. What's good to me? Because I'm the rustic, modern, um, fixer upper. Yeah. That's my style. Yeah, I'm yeah. protective. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I love that show. Oh my God, I love that show. <laughs> love it. No. <laughs> okay, well, listen, you've got my email. If something okay. comes up. Linda? Yes, sir. Okay. Linda yeah. Barbara. And okay. so yeah. if no one picks up in two weeks, you call me. Okay. If you're willing to wait, because you can't, I totally understand. Yeah, girl, just check with me, you know, because okay. um, I may, you never know, I may have something that pops up. Just a, a check that we could be an email like yeah. you've been doing? Okay. Okay. But my, um, this number here uh -huh. will ring my cell phone. Okay, well then let me take this. Yeah. All right. All right, well, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank, Thank you. you. Wait, I guess I where's your, uh, I don't know. Draw, <laughs> she's so good. And then when I saw the French doors, I was like, no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a couple of, like, whoever had the last before we did, they put a new door. Oh, so this was already so this here? This door here. All we have to do is clean it up. Yeah, yeah, it's an added. I mean, someone like my, like me, you get the I don't even be like, this is a new stamp. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we thought about selling selling the house, but the taxes are the crushing. Yeah. So I was because I just got here, I was planning on um, looking to buy. I don't want to give myself one more year because I'm so used to it over there. And of course it's gonna be gas, but I still wanna I wanna move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a big it's yeah, a big, yeah. big investment I made. And um, Columbus is big enough for it. It's, you kind of want to know the neighborhood and yeah. everything. Yeah, so I'm going to give myself one more year. Yeah, I like it. Is this no date on Tuesday? No, Wednesday when it happened. Uh -huh. I had to go downtown to our office. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I drove in, it took an hour and a half to get to work, which normally takes me about a good 30 minutes. Oh, it's a lot of snow. Oh my gosh, and the accident, and all of, like, 70 was shut down, and then 270 was like, everyone was like 15 miles an hour, so yeah, it was yeah. nothing like Texas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that for sure. Well, I appreciate you guys having fun. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Love you guys. yeah this, this place is checking with me. I will. Um, I mean, if it doesn't, if it doesn't leave, then I'll definitely reach out. Okay. Okay. And if not in two weeks, I'll just reach out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. You have a good one. All right. You too. Take care. Yeah. Careful. All right. Um. Really, Ryan. Yo, how we doing? We good. We good. All right, so now y'all see how that goes. Yeah, rehab for um, 20,000, purchase for 67,000, rehab for 20,000, and it has a, a value of about 140,000 right now. Yeah, 67,000. Um, so there it is, there it is. So what y'all think so far, how we doing? The open house, I finally got a break. But I'm here, I'm here until 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, let me lock this. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this house so far, man. This, this house, it's got a nice basement. I'll show you guys, I'm going to try to show you guys around before I leave. So if you want to see the entire house, um, I'll show you guys the entire house. All right. <laughs> Somebody said I'm about to get the guac. <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a good investment. Trust me. Like sixty seven thousand. I when I bought that Gallardo, I had I had the cash to I had the cash to buy that car. Um, for it was it was one hundred seven thousand. I had the cash saved up to buy the car, but instead of buying that car, I financed that car and I bought this house with the cash. So I put sixty seven thousand down, bought the house, closed real fast. And then, um, and then I took 20,000 20, and I rehabbed this house real nice. Like you can see, like if you guys can't see this kitchen, let me show you. Like that's the kitchen. It's, there used to be a wall right here. It looked real ugly. We knocked the wall down, opened it up. And now, you know, you got the kitchen. Everybody likes this deck out here. This deck is huge. 
I don't know if you can see it. Then you can go down there to the basement. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the house before um, before I leave. But anyway, instead of buying the um, the Lamborghini with that hundred thousand, I bought this house and I financed the Lamborghini and I fixed up this house and that was my. I, I basically invested the money instead of putting it in the car. Because if I if I bought that car with the cash. I wouldn't be making nothing off of that hundred thousand, right? But instead, I bought this house, and now this house is going to make uh, thirteen hundred dollars a month. Let's see, thirteen hundred times twelve is what? Thirteen hundred times twelve months. That's fifteen thousand six hundred dollars a year that I'm making off this house, um, and that. That payment on that Gallardo is only a, like a thousand dollars a month, like a little more than a thousand dollars a month. So, with this investment property, I was making enough to pay for that Gallardo, and then when that Gallardo would have been paid off, I still be getting paid off this house. But if I put that hundred thousand dollars into that car, then I wouldn't be making anything. So that's why that's why I started making videos on YouTube to kind of show people different strategies. When you get to that point where you, you know, buy your dream car or buy something nice like that, you might want to think about taking that money and investing it in some real estate or something else that'll pay you fifteen thousand a year. So what we got? What y'all? What y'all talking about? We got forty-seven people on the live stream. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I did show this house with an agent a long time ago. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot better than it used to be for sure. Um, but let me see uh, what y'all got for me, man. I got any questions? So yeah, that's the problem, man. If I sold it, how much would I pay in taxes? Man, that's the problem. If I, if I sold it, my profit would be around uh, 50,000 and the taxes at my tax rate with, with my businesses and stuff, man, I would see, I would see a little more than half of that. I see about 60% of that. So, um, uh, five times six. So I would see about 30,000 in profit. Um, if I sold it probably, probably a little less, probably more like 25,000. After you pay your realtor fees and all that stuff, your um, closing costs. So um, I'd rather keep it, and there's a whole lot of tax write-offs when you um, when you hold property. So it's kind of warm in here. I'm gonna turn the um, I'm gonna turn the heat down real fast. But yeah, another thing when I bought this house, I put. Um, I put a brand new, uh, I put a brand new air conditioning unit here, and a brand new furnace and a brand new water tank. So I haven't had any problems with that stuff since. AC works real good, heat works real good, uh, flawless. Everything's good in this house. Only thing I think this house really needs that I could probably fix up is gutters, and I got I got a gutter guy. I may have him. I may have to come over here, but uh, let me see what y'all talking about. Hey, guilty spark, man. Thanks. I figured it might be helpful. I figured it might be helpful to um, to show something like this. I don't know exactly how many people are going to show up, but when they do show up, you can see you can see how I handle the people. Like I try to make them feel welcome. I try to make them feel like I'm not shady or something like that. Like a lot of times body language will tell people stuff. So if you if you stay real far away from people, then they think you're trying to hide something or you're not or you're not comfortable about something. So I shake people's hands, I talk to them, but I don't get too close to them because then they feel like you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to be uh, intimidating. So you know, but I just show you guys how I do stuff, man. And to be honest, usually every so far, I showed this house um, two times before this, 
And both of the people that saw the house wanted to rent the house and submitted applications. But I haven't started reviewing applications because I wanted to have this open house first. And um, man, I had, I had from Zillow, I had over, over 90 people um, submit interest in this, in this house, asking questions about the house. So I figured the smart thing to do would, have, would be to hold an open house, let people come in and check the house out, instead of me trying to go to the house 90 different times to show it. So that's a strategy. If you own real property and you got a, a hot property, you advertise it on Zillow, um, you, should get a, you should get a good response. But you don't want to be running to the house. The only time I'll come and show a house, like onesie, twosie, uh, or instead of, let me explain what I mean. The only time I'll come and show the house to one family at a time is if that family somehow shows me that um, they're a real good tenant. And the, the, best way, the best way I judge that is based on their, um, their lease application like they submit a lease application beforehand, or a lot of times people will be moving into your city from out of town, and, and usually they're professionals. So if I can see that type of situation, and the company is moving in to work here at a professional in Columbus, then I know they probably make good money. So I'll show the house to people in that scenario. But for all the local people that I have no idea who they are and all that stuff, I have an open house, so I don't have to come over to the house 50 times to show it. I just show it one day, two hours on a Saturday, or two hours on a Sunday. But usually I don't even do both days. And like, if somebody really wants to see the house and they can't make it, if they can show me that they're a, a real strong tenant, then I'll just set up an appointment to show the house with them uh, separately. So, y'all got questions, let me know. Hey, um, Drake man said, how does the money work on a buy and hold? You gotta, you gotta uh, clarify that question, how does the money work? I don't know what you mean by that, so just uh, explain that question. Um, somebody asked me if I own any duplexes. I don't own any, du I own a half of a duplex, which is like a condo. And it's a real big, it's a real, it's one of my biggest houses. It's a four bedroom, half of a, uh, a duplex. I wanna buy the other half, but so far I haven't been able to get it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working on that. Uh, somebody asked me what the specs are on this house. Um, you can go to monsterstates.com and you'll see it. It's a, I think it's the second house on the list. But it's a three bedroom, two full bathrooms, um, one of the bathrooms is a master suite, like on the master bedroom, there's a bathroom. Um, the reason why people really like this house is because it's totally remodeled. Everything is like new in the house. Um, the bathrooms are like brand new. They got ceramic towel on the floor and everything. And then the other reason people really like this house, I'm gonna give you two other reasons. The, the basement is finished and it's a nice size basement with two finished rooms in it. And it has a washer and dryer room that's not bad not too bad looking. Um, all the mechanicals are new in the house. They like it for that reason. But then also if you go outside, there's a real nice big backyard. So a lot of people have pets in Columbus. So um, they really like that backyard and it's fenced in. So if you got a little dog, your dog can go out there or whatever and don't and you don't have to worry about the dog running run away. But um, that's why they like this house. The deck is huge on the back of this house. Like the deck on this house is bigger than my house. So, um, so somebody asked me if I know about ambient lighting in the Raptor. I don't know about that. I, I wish I did. So you got some information, tell me. I'm gonna show the full house. Um, if nobody shows up here in five minutes, I'll show the full house. Um, yeah, I'm down with the track day, man. SRT speed, I'm definitely down. Um, and yeah, uh, the rehab, yeah, it was 20 grand. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so we got another family about to show up. It was, a, it was it maybe was a little more than 20,000. And um, yeah, I advertise on Zillow. 
Zillow.com.
if there's two people on the application, just submit two of them. Yeah, and then uh, there's also the lease requirements are on the website. You see a link to the page. But it's pretty straightforward. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. cool. All right. If you got questions, um, my email is right there, and that'll ring my cell phone. Up. Alright, so I'm Tracy. Yeah, okay, man. Nice to meet you. You too. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Tracy. 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 Hey, T
Yeah, if you have any questions, um, my contact information is on that paper. Okay. I listened to your website. Um, you guys have other properties? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got uh, most of our properties are in Blacklist. Okay. Um, we, yeah, we might have a four bedroom coming available uh, pretty soon, and, and maybe a, a two bedroom uh, condo that might become available as well. Yeah, okay. I mean, this is nice, but we need a little more. Yeah, yeah. we got a lot of furniture. Okay, mm -hmm. the four bedroom is, is a good amount of business, but I don't know if you guys need to be in a certain school district. Um, how are the high schools, do you know? Um, my kids went to school there. I don't know. Because right now we're at Groveport. Groveport? I, probably, I would guess it's about the same. Is it? But, um, but I moved in before my kids went to high school, so I don't know okay. real good. Um, so yeah, I can, I can yeah. tell them to take the wrong thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is Reynoldsburg School right. District. Okay. Um, Reynoldsburg School District is in Blackwood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 I would say uh, if there's a little sign up the box on my website mm -hmm. where you can put your email and then when I have new properties I can tell you. Okay. And they all are pretty much laid out like this, like a brand new. Nice. Um, yeah. I took a virtual tour on some of them. They don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, all those those are those problems we have right now. Some of them just pop up. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that your system was new too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all probably can keep track better than me. Let me see what kind of questions you guys had. But as you can see, um, we have different types of people showing up. So you gotta you gotta be prepared for all different types of um, <laughs> Capri Capri. Shout out to my girl. Um, but anyway. So we got all different types of people um, showing up at this um, showing of this, this rental property here. And um, one family was from Mexico. So um, it pays to be able to speak more than one language, even if you don't speak that language perfectly. At least you can show people that you're, if you have a product or service to offer, you can show people that you value their business by trying to communicate with them in the language that they're most comfortable with. So um, that's not really why I learned Spanish, like to do business and stuff, but <clears throat> I did learn it, so why not try to use it? And like I said, even if you don't speak perfect Spanish or whatever the language is, if you make an effort, um, people usually appreciate that. So, um, you know, that's something that's cool that that, ha <laughs> that happened. Hey, Cap. Cap, do you want to rent this house? <laughs> you, you first on the list. But you'll never be here. <laughs> so, um, hey, uh, I promised to show you guys um, the house. So, I'm actually filming right now. I'm filming. It's not really my phone. It's actually uh, a, a, a Mevo device. It's like it's made for live streaming. So in case you guys haven't seen this house, let me show you guys the yard real quick. This is the yard. So this is like this is a lower middle class neighborhood. So it's not anything fancy, but this I mean, most cities have a large lower middle class, right? So it's a safe bet for a rental property in this price range, in this kind of neighborhood. So anyway, this is the deck. It's a huge deck. It's probably, it's probably, man, 30 feet wide and about 20 feet deep, 15, 20 feet deep. So, and then the yard is fenced in, so people like that. 
You know what I'm saying? There's no garage. That's the only downside of this house. There's no garage. But we, the way we make up for not having a garage is by having a big basement. So I don't know. I'll show you guys before I leave. Before I leave, I'll show you guys the full tour of the house. But here's the little partial tour. You know what I'm saying? So this is bedroom number one, bedroom number two, bedroom number three. Turn on the fan. It's one of the re remodeled bathrooms right there. So, but I can't take you guys through the whole house because if somebody shows up, somebody shows up and they don't see me, then they might leave and we don't want that, right? So anyway, um, yeah, this is this has been a pretty good open house. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have an application from everybody because one thing that I do. A lot of people charge for their application. I don't charge for my application because I don't run a credit check on somebody unless unless I want them to rent the place. And that's gonna cost me 30 bucks or something like that. So I eat the cost of the credit check, but the more applicants I have, the better, because then I can choose the best tenants. And um, people start feeling like they have some skin in the game. They feel like they've invested in your property when they submit an application. So the other thing about not charging an application fee is the more applications you get, you pick one person, but all of those other people that didn't get to rent your house, they got to see your house and they like it. So then the next time you have a house available, they know the, the level of quality of your houses. And then you can go email those people and say, hey, I got another house available. Why don't you come and check it out? And if, if, the app, if there was an application fee, then you would, half of those people or more than half of those people might not, might not submit an application. So that's why I make my application free because I'm building um, basically a list of prospects, okay? So, so far, like I said, seven or eight families came so far. Um, I don't know what time it is. Let's see what time it is. Do people charge for application? Yeah, most people do charge for application, Cappy, but I don't charge because of my strategy that I just mentioned. <laughs> He's at 180,000 cash. Um, can you have a house right now? I probably would sell it for 180,000, but you'd be overpaying for the house. You know, it's probably worth about 140 or 150, but um, I don't want to sell it for that much. One day when it's worth 180, I might sell it, um, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush because them taxes, man, them taxes hurt. And Rob, uh, I was telling a story about how I got this house and how much I invested. Um, Cause remember I got that blue Gallardo? I was going to use the money to buy that Gallardo but instead, I financed the Gallardo, and I bought this house with cash. The house cost sixty-seven thousand. The rehab was twenty thousand. So I have about eighty-seven thousand to ninety thousand in this house invested. But I'm making thirteen hundred dollars a month, or fifteen thousand six hundred gross a year off of that um, eighty-seven thousand or ninety thousand uh, dollars investment. So. For me, it, it's definitely worth it because that payment that I get for this house paid off that Lambo or was paying off the Lambo. So I think I might have somebody showing up on the trip. Oh, we're good. All right, we're good. That was the neighbor getting ready to leave. So, um, so somebody said, Drake man said, if you had built this one, how much would it have cost you to build this house? Man, um, man, to be honest, I think it would cost every bit of 140,000, man, to be honest, to be honest, it's, it's expensive. It, if you're going to build a house, I think it's better, man, like, if, to me, if I'm, if I'm going to build a house, I want the house to be worth over $200,000 when I'm done with it. 
because if you build a small house or whatever, it's, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you uh, at least one hundred and twenty thousand just to build a house uh, around here. At least where I am now, and I've only started building one house, and it's um, it's expensive because of the, because you got to have all of the different things that you need to pay for real detail lists or else you get nickel and dime on all the different things that could happen that could be, be expensive. So, um, so far, like that house that I'm, that, that I'm building the Huracan project, I'm already like a hundred thousand in and I don't even have my electric and um, plumbing signed off on yet. And, you know, like I can get into that, like that, that's a whole different thing that we could talk to, talk about in another uh, live stream. So no, Project Hurricane is not done. I'm stuck on plumbing right now. My plumber, my general contractor, he tried to do the plumbing, but it failed inspection. So I gotta get a licensed plumber in there that's gonna charge me thousands to fix all the plumbing stuff. Then once I, once I get plumbing passed and good, then I should be okay. And we should start rolling and probably only take a two or three months to finish it. Um, but no, it's not done yet. Um, so Rob, did you get the answer? Um, so yeah, so yeah, I paid cash for this house. And so far, yeah, I used basically all my personal savings to fund Project Huracan. And, um, and it's not done yet, but, but I'm going to get it done. I just got to get time and like prioritize it. I mean, I need a certified plumber and I'm trying to get quotes right now. So that was not done yet. Um, would I recommend a property manager for a 12 unit rental? Man, only if, only if you can find a real good, trustworthy one. When I say trustworthy, that they're not gonna nickel and dime you with silly uh, repair fees and stuff. Um, if you can find a real good one, then yeah, but see, the other thing you might consider for when you start getting a bunch of properties is, is having somebody that works for you part-time that's a property manager. So they work for you, so you manage all of the expenses where if it was an independent property manager, they don't work for you, and so they will manage the expenses, but they might not be looking out for your best interest on the prices and stuff. So you gotta be careful with that, man. You, but if you can't handle it, yeah, you gotta you gotta get a property manager. But just make sure you can get out of the property management contract um, without no crazy fees or anything like that. If you need to cancel it. Um, Emiliano, what's up, man? Uh, bon dia, bon dia, Captain. Um, so somebody asked if. Uh, but what would I recommend for a team wanting to get into real estate? To be honest with you, I would say study first. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a real estate course coming out in March. Um, if, you're, if you're a teenager, um, I'll make sure you can take the course. Um, so just stay just stay tuned to my channel. Like just turn your notifications on so you know when I drop a video. And eventually, I'm gonna be announcing that um, real estate class that's gonna be online. And you can take that. So if you're just getting started, man, the first thing you want to do is study. You want to know what you're getting into. You want to know how to uh, evaluate a deal. Like that's where really most of the value of my course is going to be is, is talking about the deal so that you don't lose money and you actually make money. So you got to know how to evaluate these properties. Like this, this action, this house, when it came on the market, the first time I saw it, they were asking $90,000 for this house and it was messed up. It wasn't nice. And I was like, nope, I'll pass on that. If it comes down to 65, I'll buy it. That's what I told my realtor. That's what I told my realtor. And they just kept it on the market at 90,000. Nobody was buying it. But part of the reason why nobody bought it that I found out later is a squatter moved in. So somebody came in and took over this house illegally and they were living in here even though 
it wasn't, um, they didn't own it or they couldn't legally rent it. Somebody just came in, a squatter. So nobody wanted to buy the house because there was a squatter in it. So for that reason, the Housing and Urban Development Department, HUD, they lowered the price of the house. And I put in a bid, as, I kept putting in the bid at 65000 Then I said, uh, I'll raise it a little bit to sixty seven. When the, when the market came back, because I was thinking I was going to flip this house. So I came to see the house again when my, my girlfriend was in town. And we came here, and we found out that there was a squatter in here, because we, we opened the front door, and a squatter came out like, hey, who's in there? And they had furniture in here and everything. And so me and my girl was like, whoa, that's crazy. So we went back in the car, and my realtor started talking to the squatter, like, yo, you're in here illegally. And so nobody wanted to buy the property because of, it's so hard to evict somebody, or at least they think it's hard. So it scared off most investors, but I wasn't scared of that. I was like, man, if I can get this house for a value with a squatter in it, I don't care. Like, the squatter's gonna have to get out. Like, legally, they're gonna have to get out. And it only really takes about a month to get somebody out. So can I eat a month of expenses on this house when the expenses are only like $130 max? Yeah, I can eat that. So I bought the house, but by the time I bought the house, um, HUD knew that there was a squatter in here and they sent some letters saying you got to get out or it's a federal crime. And the person moved out. So when I got the house, I didn't even have to evict them. So, you know, don't be scared like of an opportunity. Don't be scared. Like if somebody's in there or whatever, eviction takes one month max, at least where I'm at. So... D Moss, I am Mr. Moss. Check out check out my brother's uh, YouTube channel. Um, I am Mr. Moss. That's my brother, D Moss. Check out his channel. Go subscribe to his channel. We need to get his subscribers up because he's got real knowledge and he's a master genius artist. So he does a lot of um, artwork and uh, he can explain it better than I can. But he does a lot of artwork. And he shows it on his channel and he shows how he does it and he's actually teaching people and giving some tutorials on um, becoming a master artist like himself so um, and also he's probably gonna have a course on that so if you're interested in art um, and when I say art man he's a master of, of all of it um, but he's a really genius painter um, as well so he's got some killer paintings but he's, he's working on this one of Pharrell that's ridiculous dope. So check out I Am Mr. Moss. Shout out to my brother. It's my older brother that I grew up with. Um, <laughs> called, yeah, we call Leroy. Leroy Henry. They heard Leroy bought the house. <laughs> they moved out quick. Um, so uh, Rob said, how much are the annual repair expenses on the rentals? Man, that's a good question. Um, I could I could probably pull a report on that. Uh, man, I would say average, I would say average a thousand dollars a year, average. Because some houses don't need, I got one tenant in my very first rental property, the guy that lives there, he never caught, I had to fix something on the AC once and, and he's been there for about five, six years and he never called me to fix anything. I think we might have another family. And they parked on the wrong side of the street. I'm a little bit weary on that. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. They park right here. So maybe they're not coming here for me. Um, but yeah. Uh, um, so let's see. Yeah, I, I think I average about $1,000 a year in repairs. Maybe less. Maybe it's more like five or six hundred average <laughs> on a rental. To be honest, man, the biggest, the most expensive thing you have to worry about on the rental properties is plumbing, because people are always messing up, clogging up the sinks and stuff like that. And plumbers are expensive, so if you can find yourself a good plumber that won't overcharge you, that's what you need, man. Because plumbers will kill you. Uh, plumbers will kill you, man. Plumbers. <laughs> Trust me, man. Plumbers will kill you. So, uh, but other than plumbing, everything else you can find cheap labor to fix everything else. Electrical, um, 
rock, carpentry, drywall, that doesn't cost anything. Uh, sometimes like the mechanical stuff can get expensive, like fixing the AC unit or fixing a um, water tank, but that's a plumber, or fixing a furnace. But I got a real good heating and cooling dude that he charges me whatever spare and I don't have to worry about him trying to steal from me and stuff. So he's good, like, and he'll put in, a lot of times he'll tell me like, yo, if you just put in a new furnace or a new AC, you won't have to worry about it for at least 10, 20 years. So, you know, I save money that way. Um, so Nigel, should we have our own website marketing plan if we want to get into real estate? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to have that. But I mean, I, I can't tell you not to do it because I, because I have, uh, I have my own website, but the marketing plan, you can get that information, um, because you're not recreating the wheel, so you can learn how to market real easily by searching online or buying real estate books and or just subscribe to my channel. I'll tell you how to market a property. But if you pick the right property, you don't even have to market. You don't even have. It's so easy to market the right property that you don't have. It's not nothing to worry about. Like I put this, I put this rental property on Zillow, and I had over a hundred, over a hundred people email me about the property. So. I mean, how hard is that? It's not hard to market. Uh, so Rob asking, why do I buy homes off a of HUD? Uh, and yeah, it's better to buy fixer uppers, yeah, because you can get them for cheaper. Um, I, I've never bought. I, I, I maybe bought a couple of houses that that didn't need work. Uh, okay, I bought a few that didn't need a whole lot of work, but um, if it needs work, man, it usually can get it for cheaper. And I I buy from HUD because it's easy. Like with my with my realtor, if I want to buy a HUD home that's open to investors, all I have to do is call my realtor and say I want to bid fifty thousand or sixty thousand or whatever. I want to bid on this house, and then he'll submit the bid. He'll do that for me, and the next day in the afternoon, usually HUD will respond and say whether or not I got the house. Simple. There's no going back and forth or none of that. No negotiating. The way you negotiate is they say no, and then the next day I can raise my bid a little bit. The only the only bad thing about it is when there's a lot of competition, you, you might only have one shot at a at a good bid with the HUD. So that's why I like HUD, man. HUD is easy. Um, Emiliano, that's good, man. Let me know how that goes. Um, Yasser said, I want to go to college this upcoming summer, but knowing you want to get into real estate, but doesn't know what to study. Uh, maybe you might study business administration, uh, business administration, maybe, and then, and then you can pick like a focus, like finance, um, or marketing or something like that. Um, but business administration, you can kind of branch off into different areas. Um, some schools offer real estate, but I think real estate pigeonholes you maybe a little bit too much. Um, and you can learn real estate after you get your degree. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, man, getting a good renter is dope. Like the renter that I had in here before, I was mad when she had to leave. I, was, I wasn't really mad, but I was a little salty when she had to leave because she was such a good tenant. Paid on time. Um, she didn't call me about any knickknack stuff. It was good. Um, Bugatti the trucker said, uh, "Quick question. Let's say you have three hundred thousand. Would you buy several cheap houses, fix them up, real nice, and ring? Yeah. Or you could. Or you could. You just gotta know what you're doing. Like I, I would say, or you could take three hundred thousand and you could buy a." A couple of flips and turn that three hundred thousand into four hundred thousand, right? But you just gotta know you gotta know what you're doing to evaluate a deal to know um, if you're buying it for a good price and then what you can sell it for after you fix it up real nice. Um, but yeah, with three hundred thousand, that's plenty of money to buy 
the, some cheaper properties, but when you buy those properties, you can buy a cheap property, but don't buy it in the cheapest neighborhood. Like for me, for me, I like to invest in properties that are in the middle class, um, could be upper middle class or lower middle class or just right in the middle. But I don't go be, I don't go below a neighborhood that's like middle class. And, when, and the way you can tell, basically you can look at a neighborhood and you can estimate what kind of people live there, like what kind of jobs they have, right? So in this neighborhood, for example, this is lower middle class neighborhood. And, I'm, and that's like not to say something offensive to anybody, but it's just a financial thing, like um, what they probably make uh, every every month. The household income around here, I would guess, is probably uh, fifty thousand or forty thousand. That's probably the house, that's probably the household average household income, forty or fifty thousand in this neighborhood. So that would put these people in middle class or lower middle class. Um, and based on the upkeep of the neighborhood, it's lower, you know, it's the lower middle class. Um, where most of my houses are is middle class, and, and then I have some houses that are probably maybe upper middle class, but just a few. So that's, so if you start talking about buying cheap houses, just don't, in my opinion, you just don't want to go below the middle class, man. Because when you start going below the middle class, uh, then you start having problems collecting rent. You start having problems with people taking care of your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't, to me personally, I don't, I don't feel like dealing with that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> so you take it. That's, that's the answer to your question, man. Um, find good, find good deals, man, in a um, good neighborhood. So, Philip Davis asked me, have I ever invested in 16 units or more? No. Um, I would like to eventually get some multi-unit properties, but where I live, there's not that many of them. There's not, there's just not, most, where I live, it's mostly single family homes and apartment complexes and condos. We don't have a whole lot of, um, like, buildings where there's just 16 units. That's, usually you get that kind of thing a lot in the, on the East Coast, um, but around here in the Midwest, it's mostly like houses and then apartment complexes. Uh, let's see. Um, so Bib and George asked a good question. He said, how do I receive payments? Do I go to the property to pick up rent? No, I've never done that in all of the years that I've been renting since 2010. I never have gone to a house to pick up rent. To me, I think that's old school and that's I don't know, like, that's the stereotypical landlord type stuff. I don't do that. If you can't, if you can't send me a check or pay online with the, with the check card, like a, um, a credit card or a check card, then you're probably not the kind of tenant that I go after. Like, you know what I mean? So I don't need to go knock on your door and collect rent. I will do it. If you ask me that, like, I will go do it. But um, I, I've never done that. I had a property manager that used to go do that to at some people, but man, either you you know, like it's not that hard to make a payment online or to send me a check or to stop by my office. Now, if I didn't have an office, then maybe the the likelihood of me picking up a check or picking up some rent might be more high. But I have an office, so people can come into the office and pay rent. But I would never have people come into my house to pay rent. Like that would I would never do that. So. Um, so to answer your question, no, I typically don't go collect rent door to door. Um, they pay online. Most people pay online. Um, I have some friends that rent for me and they, they pay in cash. Um, and I might get, I might get that money from them in person when I see them.
Pero estaba casado con una dominicana por casi 10 años. Oh, so aprendió el español? Aprendí. Ah, ok. Pues okay. bienvenido. Esa es la casa que estamos okay. hablando. Sí. ¿Ya la aceptaron? Dime. ¿Ya la aceptaron? ¿Ya se aceptó? No, no, no. ¿No podemos haber aceptado? Porque mi hija vino. Ok. Una bolita linda. Uy. Oh. Y está interesada en la casa. Ah, ok. Y quería que ustedes vean. Ah, es... Sí, sí que ya se la dan. Ah, ya se la dan. Son las tres cuartos, ¿no? So are we live again? I know we sorry we lost a lot of people, but um man my phone my phone went went down man. So my apologies for that. Um but that was actually uh that was actually the parents of the lady who came here with her three kids, that was her parents that live in Columbus. And she, I guess she wanted them to see the house. And um, so that's what that was. I got 15 more minutes and then I'm done. So I appreciate you guys keeping me company on this, um, on this uh, showing. Let me see here. We're live. And I'm checking my messages here. My like my phone ran out of battery, so that's that's what happened. Um, so yeah, that's the scoop. Well, no, that's that's the scoop. That's they're from Puerto Rico, and their daughter was the one who came with her. She was a real nice lady, right? She came with her three kids, and she's so interested in renting the place out that she she sent her parents over here to check it out. So they were probably over visiting her. Cause she lives not too far away and so she sent her parents over here to take a look at it so i think she really likes it and she said she would put down a deposit today if she if she could but the problem is her lease is not over until um the end of march or april and i want to i really want to rent this place out right away like in march but if her application looks good then I might rent it to her because uh, I like renting to people who are not, don't have problematic personalities and I could tell by her personality that um, probably would be real easy to rent to her. Uh, so I'm gonna take that into consideration. But I'm gonna look at all the applications and we're gonna, and we're gonna go with the best one, right? So um, Bugatti the Trucker figured it out, that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, <laughs> close the deal. Yeah, this is a successful open house, man. I expect to have applications from everybody except for the one, the one family that came, the couple that had the little girl. They said this place was a little bit too small for them because they got a lot of furniture and stuff. So, uh, I told them I may have some other properties that they might be interested in. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so. I can't, I don't know if I can see comments on it. I don't think I can see comments on here. That's the only problem. Um, but in case, in case you're just now tuning in, um, what I did here was I had an open house and a showing for the Gallardo project. Now the reason I call this the Gallardo project, because I bought a Lamborghini Gallardo a while ago. And instead of paying for that car in cash, I took the cash and I bought this house as an investment and um, and I rehabbed the house. I spent about $20,000 on the rehab. The house, this house was $67,000 and, um, and the rent on this house, <coughs> excuse me, the rent on this house is $1,295. So $1,295 a month. It's about $15,600 a year. So I'm having an open house because I had a tenant in this house, but the tenant moved out uh, after about six months because she had to move back to Virginia to be with her family or something like that. So um, really good tenant, except it looked like she had some chickens or something in, in some chicken coops or something in the backyard. So a lot, some people are starting to do these chickens, like have chickens and urban farms and stuff because I guess they eat the eggs and it's cheap and they know it's organic or something, I guess. 
But anyway, um, she was a good tenant, uh, but she left about two weeks ago. So we cleaned up the house and I put it on Zillow.com, um, listed it for rent, and we got a lot of interest in the house. A lot of people were interested in seeing it. So instead of showing the house to every single person that wanted to see the house, I just had, I just said, look, I'm showing the house from 12 to 2 on Saturday. If you can make it, come on. So it looks like somebody else is coming. Oh, no, I'm good. I had somebody walking down the street, so we're, we're all right. So anyway, um, I rented this house out. No, I'm sorry. So yeah, we're having a showing today, and um, we had probably maybe nine or ten families that came through to see it, and I'm, I'm going to be closing up at two o'clock, and then I'm going to go home and work on my real estate course, because I'm trying to have that done next month. I wanted to have it, the, the, I wanted to have it finished right on March 1st, but it doesn't, doesn't look like I'm going to get it done by March 1st, but I'll have it done sometime next month. Um, so shout out to all of you guys that tune in, keep me company as I do this uh, open house and showing. So as I promised, I, I will show you guys the house. So I'm almost done. So I'll walk you guys through the house real quick um, so you can see it. So like I said, this is like a lower middle class neighborhood. I'll show you the outside real quick as well. Like. Like I said, like you could tell by the the upkeep of the houses <clears throat> and the um, cars that people drive and stuff like that. That you know, like the you could you could guess the income range around here. The household income is probably right around forty thousand or fifty thousand, something like that. Um, this is an older neighborhood, so you got you still got some original families in here that that own the house. You know what I'm saying? And um, so there's some older people in here. So that's the front of the house. I'm going to show you the, the back of the house. <clears throat> this actually would have been a good flip. This would have been a good flip. But I just didn't want to, because it didn't cost that much, it was okay for me to um, to just rent it out. If it was a more expensive house, I would have flipped it because the mortgage would have been so high. Like, And the, and the reason why that's, you got to pay attention to that is... When people move out and you got to pay that mortgage, the higher it is, the more it hurts, right? So if you got a real high mortgage and that person moves out and you got to pay that extra thousand dollars a month in the mortgage, then it might hurt a little bit. Anyway, here's the, um, I'm going to show you guys the basement. So we finished this. It wasn't finished at first, but I knew because I didn't have a garage, I knew I needed to have some kind of value down here. So I finished this entire space off. So it's a nice, it's a nice big like extra living room down here. I think she has some dogs down here. So it looked like she has some furniture down here, some dogs. Messed up my carpet a little bit. But anyway, got another extra living room. And then we got a little poor man's bedroom or whatever you want to call it, but there's a door. <laughs> with a real low doorknob and then there's some storage space that we put in too underneath the steps you can't see it because it's kind of dark but we got a little storage space um and then you got some storage space here in the raw basement area we just painted it so let me turn that light off and then we got a uh washer dryer area here's your laundry room basically and um, you can see there's new furnace and new water tank. Zero problems with that. It's the kind of thing you want to do when you buy one of these older houses is replace the, um, the mechanical so you don't have to be running back and forth fixing stuff. So that's the downstairs. There's the kitchen that we remodeled. Oh, we got somebody coming in here, so let me get off of here. <laughs> Oh really? Oh, okay. And, um, I 
I talked to you while I was telling you that some crazy stuff. Oh, um, over there at uh, Cross Point? The, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was in that. Yeah, because you're at Cross Point. Yeah, okay. That's what's up, man. Uh, so, let me get our information on the challenge. So these are the details, it has the instructions for the application process, um, like the file. The application is online, it's free, mm -hmm. on our website. Um, but the house has three bedrooms, totally remodeled. Um, two bathrooms up there, there's like one shared bathroom, and then there's one master bathroom, like also the master bedroom. Uh, so you have to just feel free to check it out. And then there's a little bit of extra space in the basement that's finished. So, um, you know, it's like an extra like living room, basically under this living room. Mm -hmm. And then it's like a <clears throat> underneath this area there's like a not really a bedroom because there's no window, but uh like a private space with a door on and everything. Okay. Y'all feel free to check it out and if you have any questions, just I'll be right here. Okay. Cool. What's your name again? Jay. Jay? Yeah. Alright. Right. Yeah. Your name? Karina. Karina, okay. Nice to meet you. Are you still you are actually pretty person? Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Yeah, you need something to learn under, you know, under pretense of, like, I got my life and stuff. Okay. I just want to have a commercial life and do whatever, but, you know. Shoot me a, my email if there's one, shoot me info. All right, if it doesn't work, so I'm not like this people like to say, I'm working under you. Okay. Go through stuff. Okay. All right, yeah. You know, I better do it than, uh, mm -hmm. hey, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, then y'all be careful. All right, thank you. Done. I believe that was the last showing. I didn't have any appointments, so I'm going based on time. So it's a little bit after two o'clock. Um, they said that they, uh, I don't know if the layout would work for them with the bedroom. They want something a little bit bigger. Um, so I don't think they're going to put in an application, which is cool. Don't want nobody to live in your house that don't want to live there. Um, but most of the other people, they, they wanted the house, like, I don't know if some of you guys were tuned in, but one lady sent her parents over here to see the house because she was so excited about it. And the, and the mom was trying to convince me to rent it to her. But the problem, the problem there is she doesn't need the house until like April and we're in February. So I would be losing like an extra month of rent. Um, and I don't know that I need to do that. Um, but if her rental application is real strong, I may consider it, you know, I may consider it. So anyway, that was uh, my live stream for the day. Um, I'm about to go get something to eat. I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. It's a real, real life situation of what you can do with an open house. And the reason why I recommend doing an open house when you have rental property is so that you don't have to run back and forth to the property and people sometimes they don't show up um, and sometimes people are not even qualified uh, to rent the place but you end up having to run and show it so the best thing to do when you got a lot of interest in the property is hold an open house on like a day when most people are off like Saturday or Sunday so that's what I did here and I wanted to live stream it so you guys can basically see how I handle people's questions See how I handle, um, you know, dealing with people when they come in, um, you know, basic stuff like that. So I'm going to leave this live stream up just in case it can help somebody. Um, if you're thinking about renting out a place and how to do it, this is just going to be another one of those how-tos on how to host an open house. So one of the things I did is I, is I always have something to give people on paper so that I don't tell them the wrong thing off, off of memory because I have more than one property. So I always prepare like a little, um, a little paper that has facts about the home, um, school district, um, and then instructions for submitting an application. But what I don't do, I thought about printing out my requirements to lease, but I don't do that because sometimes somebody might not meet the requirements for this property, but they might meet the requirements for another property that you have. So I'd rather that they submit the application so that I have their contact information and I can say, hey, 
you don't meet the requirements for this house, um, but we got another house that's coming up. Maybe you guys meet the requirements for that one. So I don't print the requirements out for that reason because sometimes it discourages people from applying. Um, another thing that I said is my rental application fee is zero. It's basically free to submit an application because I'm building up a prospect list of potential renters when they submit those applications. So that when I have new uh, vacancies and new um, houses available, then I can email those people. But if I charge the fee, then I would get less applications and less people, like less prospects that I can rent to. So anyway, that's, that concludes this live stream. Um, if you guys had a lot of questions that I did not answer, then maybe I'll get on and do a live stream um, tomorrow. Um, so I can't guarantee what time because I got a lot of work to do with, on that online real estate class that I'm working on. And if you um, are interested in that online real estate, real estate class, sign up on my website as a member on willmotivation.com. And uh, if you go there, you can just fill out the little form that pops up. And then I can email you when the course is ready. And I'm going to be giving away the course free to some people. But the only how you can get that is if you are a member of my website, realmotivation.com. So anyway, I hope this live stream was helpful. And um, I love y'all. I appreciate you guys for supporting my channel and supporting me, keeping me company on this live stream. Oh, I almost forgot. Somebody asked to see the, the house. So I'll show you guys real quick. I'll show you guys the house real quick. So I already showed downstairs. If you didn't see the downstairs, I, you're just gonna have to rewind the um, live stream when we when we get it posted back up. But I promised to show the the upstairs. So here's the upstairs. This is it. So this is bedroom number one. It's a small bedroom. Um, man, I didn't know that stuff was in here. I gotta get rid of that. That uh, man paid somebody to clean up. They didn't do such a great job. Anyway, that's bedroom number one. This is the bathroom. We re rehab this bathroom. You know, shower, put towel in everywhere. I don't know. I don't like how they didn't match the towel grout when they rehabbed it. But it is what it is. This is bedroom number two, and this is bedroom number three, which is the master bedroom. It's a little bit bigger, but it's a small house, so the bedrooms aren't that big. Closets not are not huge either. But you got a huge backyard, you got a master bathroom, you know, so that's for um, the master suite. You got a ceiling fan in every room, and that is the main floor, so I'll try to keep my promises. I leave the lights on because nobody's here, but I want anybody walking by at night to think that there's somebody in here, you see what I'm saying? So. Um, I leave the lights on in the bedrooms, turn the lights off in the, in this main area. The lights are on on the back porch. If you got a rental property and it's vacant, I suggest you make it look like somebody might be there. Okay. So anyway, that's it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. This is Will Motivation. Go sign up on my website because that's where you get all the updates. WillMotivation.com. W-I-L-L motivation.com all right peace i'll holler at you guys later oh i just dropped another video where i where i gave a speech at a university in atlanta um, i just dropped that video earlier today so if you're interested check that out it's kind of like a true story about how i got into entrepreneurship how i got into real estate how i started my company my software company all that good stuff i thought it was a pretty good video it's a little bit longer but if you got some time check it out tonight or today whenever all right Peace. Talk to you guys later. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching today's video. There's a lot more to come. Hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel. A lot of you guys have been asking me about when is my online course going to be ready? Well, I have good news for you. My online course is completed. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can click on that link and get a 40% discount off the course. That'll be for the first 50 students. So if you're ready to take the online course that I've basically laid out everything that I know 
about how to invest in real estate, click the link below or just go to www.willmotivation.com slash invest. And I thank you guys for taking the time out to watch today's video. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.